Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. Gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. Well, Electric Boat Startup Arc has launched just 10 months ago, and they've already secured investments from Will Smith's uh, venture capitalist fund, Dreamers, Diddy's, Combs Enterprises, and Kevin Durant's company as well. So that company started with just one $300,000 boat. It has closed a seed round in February, and they are getting to the money. Nice. That makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. An electric boat. We have electric cars. All right, and Jay-Z has officially joined Instagram. People are so excited about this. Immediately, he got 600,000 followers. The only post he did was the film The Harder They Fall, which he produced for Netflix. So should be um, interesting. They have a screening here in New York. Yep. I wonder, I wonder what got uh, Jay-Z to that point where he decided he wanted to join Instagram. It can't be just to promote that movie, right? Well, that's what it seems like so far. Right, and the only person he follows... Beyonce. I know that's right. Jay-Z said, I'm tired of having a burner account. Y'all need to see me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. And Caitlyn Jenner has, uh, she's on the reality TV series Big Brother VIP in Australia. And she is talking about OJ Simpson. Here is what Caitlyn Jenner had to say. Nicole was Chris's best friend. Yeah. Had been for a long time. Mm, yeah. Uh, I was at Nicole's house two days before the murder. Obviously, he did it, and and he got away with it. And at one point, he even told Nicole, I'll kill you and get away with it because I'm O.J. Simpson. Then Nicole relayed that on to Chris at one point. And even after the not guilty verdict, the first thing, Chris turns around at me and goes, we should have listened to Nicole. She was right, right from the beginning. All right, so that is Caitlyn Jenner talking about O.J. Simpson and Nicole Brown. And that's all on Big Brother VIP. All right, Boosie was not too happy with the Breakfast Club interview with T.S. Madison, and uh, in particular, this part. Boosie. Nigga, what is you bother with uh, Lil Nas X for? What's the problem? Mm -hmm. My thing is, when when he said that uh, uh, he's a detriment, like, to kids, and, and we need to worry about the kids and all this stuff, but I'm like, but you the same man had a overgrown ass woman performing fellatio on your young son and you didn't see anything wrong with that but you you it's make it make sense to me i was so confused about the situation like who 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 kids really need to be protected? I feel like I've seen so many things when I was a kid. That's what's made me accepting of a lot of things now just because i've seen it it hasn't made me want to be any way that I'm not, but I've seen it, so it made me a lot more like, okay, this is what it is. Yeah, I and know. And a lot of it is how you are raised in your household, too. Well, it is how you're raised in your house, but what people have to understand, what however you're raised in your house, Charlemagne, mm-hmm. is not the way that the that you, you share this world with, with everybody who's right. been raised in their house. And so <laughs> you may not accept it, but you need to respect it. Yeah, I love hip-hop, and I love all the street rappers, but, you know, none, none of them have the the right to say Lil Nas X is a detriment to kids. He's not. If, he's, you've, if you've ever rapped not. about violence towards people, celebration of drugs, using or selling, you don't, you, nah. You can't Listen, stand on that moral high ground. Disrespecting women. Yeah, you can't stand you know, on that. And that go for all, not just Boosie, that go for and everybody. And for everybody. That's Me everybody. included. You and can't stand on that I don't got no issue ground. with Boosie. All right, well, Lil Boosie responded. Now, he actually responded to a paid in full tweet from October 25th. But uh, we got the gist of what he was saying. He said, they still got my name in their mouth about that gay-ish. LOL, SC, the God, you part of the problem. Keep egging these people on your show with this, bro. You using your platform to support Nas and his antics. I see what side you on. And he put a rainbow emoji. He said, F y'all kids, SMH, dummies. So. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm not on no side. I'm on the side of blackness. First and foremost, I'm going to send Boosie healing, uh, healing energy. And I don't even know what I got to do with it because I... If I'm mistaken, I thought I also said uh, me included when I said we can't stand on that moral high ground as far as pointing at somebody and saying they've been a detriment to kids because uh, they're a detriment to kids because we've all said or done things that have probably influenced kids negatively. I I said me included, you know? Right, and and, and listen, nobody brought Boosie's name up but T.S. Madison. It wasn't like 
Yeah, like, T.S. Madison had the words for Boosie, mm-hmm. not me. And, and I'm going to tell you all something. I'm black first, and The Breakfast Club, to me, has always been a platform for black voices. Same way Boosie can come up here and express himself, T.S. Madison can she come up here and express She had something she wanted herself. to say, and there's nothing wrong with that. She's allowed to do that. And I also feel like it's not, and I saw people saying, you're pushing an agenda. I'm just all about people being comfortable in their skin and having the right to exist and live. That's all. You know, That's the only you know, agenda I'm pushing. You know what's crazy? Uh, regardless of who you bring, if that person has an opinion, a strong POV, it's going to be backlash. Boosie gets backlash when he comes up here. T.S. Madison gets backlash when she comes up here. And Charlemagne and The Breakfast Club get to blame. Always. So that's it, it is what it is. I'm built for it. Been built for it. All right. Now, Raiders star wide receiver Henry Ruggs III, who was the 12th overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, was in a serious car accident in Vegas Tuesday morning. They're saying it was a wreck, and cops are saying that he was behind the wheel driving his Chevrolet Corvette when he crashed into a RAV4. It was around 3.39 a.m. The Toyota caught on fire, and first responders did locate a deceased person in the SUV. Ruggs was transported to a local hospital for treatment for non-life-threatening injuries. They said he did show signs of impairment at the scene, and he will be charged with DUI resulting in death. If he is convicted on that charge, he could face up to 20 years in prison, the Raiders have addressed the incident, saying we are devastated by the loss of life and our thoughts and prayers go out to the victim's family. They did say they were in the process of gathering more information and that their hearts do go out to the family. So, again, really um, awful situation, and we'll give you more details as they come. But the, uh, Raider, the Raiders did release Henry Ruggs III. I mean, it's crazy that we still got to say don't drink and drive in 2021, but I, yeah, I guess don't drink and drive. It's just wild with Uber and Lyft and, mm-hmm. you know, all these other ways that you can just literally get on your phone and call a car to take you to your destination when you're under the influence. That's nuts. And wh- where are your people around you? You don't got nobody around you to be like, nah, bro, let me get those keys. Or nah, bro, we calling an Uber. Like, damn. All right, well, that's your rumor report. All right, Charlamagne, who are you giving that donkey to? Man, there's a Catholic priest in Rhode Island who needs to come to the front of the congregation. We would like to have a word with him. His name is James Jackson. Lord, have mercy. Wait till y'all hear what he was using the church's Wi-Fi for. All right. And then after that, we have Ask Ye. So if you need relationship advice or any type of advice, you can call Ye now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.